In this video, I'm going to show you how to add a new page within .NET Nuke and go over some of the settings that get configured and should be configured when you're creating a page within the platform. Now, in order to create a page within a site, you're going to have to have permissions to do so. I'm logged in with a host or a super user account, so I have access to be able to do that. Then you can do that with an administrator, and then you can even assign users to be able to do that with granular permissions found within .NET Nuke. Now, in order to create a page, what I'm going to do is go into the Pages menu within the Control Panel. We're going to choose Add New Page. Now, we also have the ability to copy a page, or if we want, we could import new content onto the current page. We'll start simply with the Add New Page option. Now, when you're creating a page, there's a couple important things that you do have to define when you're creating the page. The first being the name of the page. Now, the name of your page is going to define the text that shows up in the menu for your web website. It will also be the URL for the page. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and create a new page called Products. The Products page will be used to house information about the bicycles that Awesome Cycle sells. Now, really, we don't have to define much else on the page at this point to create the page, but let's go through some of the other settings that are available to us. The page title allows us to change the browser title and the HTML title of the current page or the page that we're creating. So let's go ahead and call this one Awesome Cycles Products. So you would typically have a little bit more information in the page title than you would in the name of the page. For SEO or search engine optimization purposes, you want to try to target the name, the title, the description, the keywords, and then the content of the page to all be related. You want to have all the, the same kind of information on a page so that you can have good rankings for search engine optimization. Now the description allows us to define a description for the page. This should be a description of what the page is and what the content is. It will be used as the meta description within the HTML for the page. So let's go ahead and just provide a simple description here. Now the keyword setting here allows you to define the keywords for the specific page. So we can go ahead and type in some common keywords for the products page here. Now in a real website, a real page, you would probably include a little bit more for your description and for your keywords. Now if you create a page that does not have a description and does not have keywords, .NET Nuke will actually utilize the site description and the site keywords. Those are found on the site settings page. But by providing a description and keywords per page, it overrides those default descriptions. From there, we can tag the page if we would like to associate it with any tags. We don't currently have any tags available to us. We would have to create those from the admin taxonomy page. And we can also choose if this page should have a parent page. Now, a parent page will be a parent page within the hierarchy, the navigation structure of the website. For our products page, we're not going to choose a parent page. After that, we can choose where the page will go in the navigation structure. Should it go before the home page or after the home page? Or should it go to the end of the list altogether? We can also just say it should be after the about page if we wanted to put it there. But for now, we're going to put products in between home and about. So it'll come after the home page. When you're creating a page, you can choose to create that page based on an HTML template. Here we can choose a folder for those templates and we can see within the templates folder specifically there is a page called or a template called default. That default template has an HTML module on it that will be applied to the page once the page is created. If we would like to create a completely blank page, we can choose none specified and not create the page based on a template. We can also create our own templates using the export functionality found within pages. The last setting here on this first tab is the include in menu option. This will make sure that the page shows up in the menu within our navigation structure. If I go ahead and scroll back up, we can see that there are some additional tabs across the top. We're going to skip over the copy page tab and go straight into the permissions. So when we're creating a page within .NET Nuke, we need to be able to decide who can view the page. 
who can add content to the page, who can edit the page, etc. That's where the permissions grid comes into play. The most important permission you're going to define is likely the view permission. So we can decide now when we're creating this page who should be able to view it. There are a number of rows here with different security roles that we can target. Most public facing websites are going to create pages that are visible to all users. So we could check the column in the view, the view column for the all users row. That would make this page visible to anyone who can access the website. Now we're creating this page for the first time. We haven't gone through and configured the content. So we actually might not want to make this page visible to all users. We can go ahead and click on that checkbox. Once we'll turn it red, that's a deny permission. And then a second click will clear out the checkbox. In doing so with the current configured permissions, what we would be doing is creating a page that only administrators can see. And that's a common approach to creating a page for the first time. You go through, you create it, and you start to edit that content as an administrator. Once the content has been configured, then you would come back in and adjust the permissions. There's also an advanced settings tab within the page creation process. We can associate an icon and a large icon within pages. That's not very common that you would do this, but if you're using the console module in .NET Nuke, that module will look for the icon and the large icon if you're using it for creating sub menus on your website. If we scroll down, we also have the ability to define the skin for our page. So if we want to apply a specific skin to the page, which will control the layout, the available panes, we can choose from the available skins that have been installed within this .NET Nuke website. For now, I'm not going to choose a skin or a container as we're creating this page. After that, we have a couple of additional settings, a disabled option here. If you want to create a page that will show up in your menu, but not actually be something that someone can click on, you can choose that option. It's not very common that you would use this option. We can also automatically have this page ref refresh at a set interval. We can put a number in this field. If we need to include specific information into the page header tags, we can put it in here. If you want to include custom JavaScript or custom style sheet references, we can do that on a page by page basis with this page header tags section. There's a cache settings option here, which will allow us to choose how the page should be cached. Typically, you're going to choose the memory output caching provider option. We can go ahead and choose that, and then we can come in and configure some additional options there. For now, let's say we want this page to be cached for 10 seconds. We can also include or exclude different parameters and control the variation limits around the caching. Finally, we have an other settings section here on the page settings, which allows us to define if this page is going to require HTTPS security. Now we would only be able to check that if we have configured SSL within the site settings. We can also control whether this page should be indexed or not by search spiders. We can set a sitemap priority. If we want to adjust that sitemap priority, values should be between zero and one and their decimals. We can also create a page that has a specific start date or a specific end date by assigning start dates and end dates into the settings. And then finally, the link URL setting allows us to create a page or a link within the menu that actually points to something else. So perhaps we wanted to have a download documentation link within our menu. We could actually link directly to a file on our website by choosing the file option and then selecting a document. For now, we're not going to use the link type. We're just going to go ahead and click on add page and that will create our new page called products. We see the page is now visible in the menu. And if you look at the URL, it reads products.aspx. So at this point, we've created a new page. We can now go through and start to configure the content on that page.